first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from the sixth and seventh chapter of Acts. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against those of the Aramaic-speaking community because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parnius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called. Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of of Cilicia and Asia. These men began to argue with Stephen. To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the Righteous One. And now you have betrayed and murdered Him, you who have received the law that was put into effect through angels, but have not obeyed it. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at Him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragging him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The epistle is from the second chapter of 1 Peter. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
We rise to the reading of the Lord, guys. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of St. John, beginning at the first verse. When he has brought all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus uses figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Here ended the gospel. because we know the risen Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we know that he has overcome all of our great enemies, especially death. And so we're content. And, the God, the, and all the readings, including the Gospel lesson this morning, point us in this direction to how we can be content. But our hymn gives us a clue. I am content, my Jesus liveth still, in whom my heart is pleased, Christ, he hath fulfilled the law of God for me. God's wrath he hath appeased. Since he in death could perish never, I also shall not die forever. I am content. I am content. Indeed, it is in the person and work of Jesus Christ that the believer finds his contentment and his hope. Uh, this is made evident in so many ways in our text, both for who Jesus is and for what he has done. What who Jesus is is uh, spoken of in many ways, and not in just the readings today, but in the liturgy, as this is Good Shepherd Sunday. So, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. In the Hebrew, Yahweh is my shepherd, the Lord God. And it is Jesus who turns out to be this good shepherd. How like God to himself become the shepherd of his sheep. And not just to rely on someone else, but to he himself visit us and take upon himself our needs and purchasing our salvation. This is driven home uh, in the first reading from the book of Acts. Remember the book of Acts is being used now because we're seeing Christ operative. And here we have the account of the uh, deacons who were formed to help the apostles uh, to do other things besides word and sacrament ministry. And uh, we see Stephen uh, takes a big focus on Stephen there and uh, his running into opposition against the synagogue, synagogue of the freedmen. And uh, his uh, confessing Christ and in such a way that he ultimately loses his life. And yet, before he dies, he says, Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And if that's all you heard in the text, you might not be so impressed. But it goes on, when they start to then rush after him, he prays, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. 
And he prays to Yahweh, who is Jesus. Only Yahweh, only the one true God, receives prayer. And here, Stephen prays to Jesus. We sing this in the liturgy. Receive, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of earth. Receive our prayer. The early church always knew the only one who receives prayer is God. For Stephen to pray to Jesus is to show that he believes Jesus is God. Yahweh come in the flesh. And why is that important? Why Yahweh and why in the flesh? Again, we're back to we're content. We can be content. We can know the certainty of our salvation because it is Yahweh the Lord and he has come in the flesh. Read again. He hath fulfilled the law of God for me. He becomes one of us to do that. The great shepherd of the sheep becomes one of the sheep. And not just any one of the sheep, but the sheep who is the sacrificial lamb, who takes away the sin of the world. But to be the unblemished lamb, to fulfill that Old Testament typology, he puts himself under the law in our place and fulfills it for us perfectly. God's wrath he hath appeased. He did it all for us. And then it says, since he in death could perish never, I also shall not die forever. And because he is true God, death could not keep its hold on him. And his sacrifice can be that he is the Lamb of God who takes away not just one person's sin, like in the Old Testament, but the sin of the world. That means you and me. That means there is nothing outside of that he is not paid for and that is not covered in the blood of Christ. Indeed, even Stephen here shows us when he prays, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Even what they do, Stephen realizes the blood of Christ can be applied to them. Um, in our gospel lesson, Jesus makes the point of who he is. Now, this, remember I said at the beginning here, that uh, each of the series has a different section. And, of course, we're at the first section. And here Jesus does not call himself the shepherd. That comes later in this chapter. He's going to say, I'm the good shepherd, right? It's a famous text, John 10. But here, he doesn't get there yet. He's building up to it. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, a man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way as a thief and a robber. He's going to contrast himself with someone else, with others. He says, the man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. Well, that's how, that's how shepherds go in and out of the pen. They go through the gate. You don't go over the fence or sneak in unless you're a sneak. You go in through the gate. And the watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. What wonderful imagery for us as we're singing the hymns of Jesus knowing our name. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. He knows his sheep, and his sheep know him. And John tells us that Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. And here, he's not just the shepherd, but he's the gate. He's the entrance. And then he says this amazing thing. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And uh, if this text bothers you, if it doesn't bother you, maybe you're not paying attention. If the text bothers you, you're not alone. It bothered scribes. I'll read it again. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. And if you listen to the Acts account, what did Stephen say? You stiff-necked people, you didn't listen even to the prophets. 
even the ones who proclaim the coming Messiah, the Christ. But here Jesus says, all who came before me. John the Baptist? Is he a thief and a robber? Isaiah? Jeremiah? The scribal tradition shows they had difficulties with this text. Some of the manuscripts uh, omit the words before me. All who came were thieves and robbers, talking about all who came over the fence. But the text probably is, the better, the harder reading is, those who came before me. And I think what we have here again is, guess what? Dialectical negation. Yeah, you see it all over. Once you, once you learn that, right? It's everywhere. Um, he's not saying that they were. He's comparing himself to, he's the ultimate. He's the gate. Any prophet who is a prophet was only a prophet as they pointed toward him. That is all that prophets were to do. To point to this Christ, this Messiah, Christ. It's all about it. We heard that last Sunday, right? When he's walking on the road to Emmaus and, he's, as well, and he explains about himself from all the prophets and all the scriptures. And so how do you recognize a false teacher, a thief, and a robber? Do they point you to Christ and Christ alone or something else or someone else or your works? Or did you do this or did you do that? But he is the gate. He is the one who ever enters through me will be saved. Because he is not only the gate, but he is the shepherd who became a sheep that he might be the sacrificial lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Because of that, I am content. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now with the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus all.